this is the debate and the vote will take place today. We now move to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, the uh, debate on women's rights defenders in Saudi Arabia. We'll start with the authors. Mr. Tanak first, one minute. Uh, like many around the world, I reacted with optimism to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's Vision 2030 reform agenda in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And the lift on women's drivers is, of course, a very good start. So positive steps towards the protection of individual rights are being made, and I welcome these wholeheartedly. However, as Saudi Arabia wishes to cement its position as an influential key actor within the Middle East and North African region, the process of judicial reform must be in line with accepted international standards. That's why it's deeply worrying that this month has seen a wave of arrests of women's rights activists whose names have not been publicized and whose rights to communication with their lawyers whilst in prison have not been upheld. The world will be watching whether the Crown Prince will hold fast to his reform agenda and prove that his desire for greater freedom for his people is a genuine one. For all Saudi Arabian citizens, I sincerely hope that this is the case. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. The second author, Mrs. Lokbile, one and a half minutes. Thank you, President. Since mid-May, seven women and four men have been arrested for their work as human rights activists. A number of the women were released a few days ago. They spoke out against the extreme forms of discrimination against women. They called for the lifting of the ban on women driving. Now, that has uh, or is due to take place. However, women in Saudi Arabia are still denied some basic human rights, whether they're traveling, working, uh, or wishing to marry. And so what has happened thus far is really window dressing. The recent uh, arrests targets uh, critics and it's completely unacceptable. Activists must be released immediately. No conditions attached. It is quite a scandal that the EU Foreign Affairs spoke, uh, Commissioner Mogherini has not called for this release. All human rights defenders in prison must be immediately released, including the Sakharai Prize winner, uh, Raif Badawi, who has been sentenced to 10 years. On lifting of the ban on driving for women in Saudi Arabia, that is something that is to the benefit of uh, car manufacturers in Europe, and I would call on them to also take action to defend the rights of their future customers. Thank you. Mr. Panseri, for one minute. Thank you, President. Well, the lifting of the driving ban on women and the desire to uh, um, change the rules on male guardianship are just some of the promises made by uh, Monet bin Salman to the uh, protagonists of global diplomacy, including the EU. Yes, certainly these are major promises, but so far they have uh, just remained on paper. Now, uh, Rev wants to speak to the world showing Saudi Arabia as a driver of uh, progress um, in the Middle East, but nonetheless the uh, civil rights, I think, show that things are moving in the opposite direction. The guardianship rule rules Saudi society it means that women can't do even the most simple things and uh, gender violence is not recognized as a crime and so that framework contradicts this uh, country uh, which is reflected in the promises of the sovereign but uh, basically um, it's a member of the commission on uh, the status of women in the united nations so i will call on this on saudi arabia to transform its its words into acts don't fool the international community male guardianship should be abolished so that uh, saudi women can fully uh, enforce their rights including sexual and reproductive rights and a call to the king that the uh, seker of prize winner raif badawi should be released who is imprisoned for having uh, expressed their own views, as uh, also applies to all the human rights defenders facing the same issues. Thank you. Well, please respect the speaking time, uh, because we've got votes as well. Mrs. Tegetakovsky, for, for one minute. 
Mr. Deputy Speaker, dear Commissioner, dear colleagues, first of all, I should like to express my thanks. It does not happen very often that we be negotiating a resolution in such a lengthy manner, spending so much time over it. And I think it is important to stress that we did consider and reconsider each paragraph of this resolution because the situation in Saudi Arabia is not simple. And I do believe that we need to see it within the greater context of things. Personally, I would like to talk about the violation of uh, women's rights in Saudi Arabia that this resolution is also concerned with. I'm very glad that we've managed to negotiate a resolution with acceptable compromises. Saudi Arabia is one of the main players as far as EU relationships with Middle East countries are concerned. We must not overlook violations of international um, treaties that Saudi Arabia itself has ratified. On the other hand, I would also like to commend the vast progress that Saudi Arabia has undertaken in the last months because uh, women's rights are being systematically reinforced and there have been huge reforms. Our resolution, however, expresses major concerns as far as the detentions of several men and women who protested against the current state of affairs of human rights. I think it is important that Saudi Arabia investigate these cases and explain them in order to give the international community a clear signal that as far as the upholding of human rights is concerned, it is as a country determined to take the next steps. The uh, right to a due process, the right to legal defense, etc. All of these have to be maintained even in Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Thank you. A further order, author, Mrs. Shaka, for one minute. Chair and colleagues, despite charm offensives by Mohammed bin Salman, Saudi Arabia is showing its true colors by arresting prominent women's rights activists, right when the driving ban that these women fought for is promised to be lifted. And then state-linked media labeled these women as traitors and they have since been charged with serious crimes. This sends a chilling signal to all human rights defenders in the kingdom and beyond. It is also a wake-up call for those who still needed it. It will be unsustainable to repress the population and women in such a systematic way as happens in Saudi Arabia every day. The promise of reforms under the 2030 strategy has been tarnished. And we should hold Saudi Arabia to its acts, not just its beautiful promises made alongside celebrities in foreign countries. The release of women's rights activists should be the first step and would, and, um, would be a way, would be a first step, important step uh, that we urge to grant basic rights to all people in Saudi Arabia. We will not be impressed with some small gestures. Grazie. Altro autore, onorevole Corrao. Thank you. The floor now goes to uh, Corrao for one minute. Thank you, President. Given the ongoing uh, persecution of uh, human rights defenders since 2013, um, the Saudi authorities are continuing to condemn uh, civil society activists and uh, cracking down on freedom of expression in the country. Saudi Arabia has launched a series of reforms trying to lift restrictions on women. This is just trying to um, pull the wool over our eyes, however. This is a government that um, uh, act um, um, in a way which will actually undermine these reforms. Bloggers and uh, activists have been uh, uh, imprisoned, women have been imprisoned for driving. Um, perhaps the fear is that women might start to um, emerge in one of the most misogynist and uh, retrograde countries in the world. And of course, this would be a threat to their power in Saudi Arabia. We now turn to the political groups, and uh, we have uh, Soraya Spos, now s and Saudi Arabia, women are treated as less than human. It is good news that women can now start to enjoy some of their most basic human rights. 
which they have long been denied, such as launching their own business and driving. But without a full functioning democracy, even these freedoms cannot be enjoyed. 11 women rights activists are right now detained in prison. The very same who have been tirelessly campaigning against the ban of driving and the repressive and inhuman guardian system. The human rights defenders must be released immediately and the reforms in Saudi Arabia must go further and faster. Why should women wait to enjoy their basic human rights? It is time for Saudi to understand that without women you are nothing. So please release these women from the prison and enjoy so they can enjoy their basic human rights. Thank you. Per il gruppo ICR onorevole On behalf of ICR our colleague Vitieska. Thank you very much uh, president ladies and gentlemen. Saudi Arabia is a Muslim country whose legal system is based on the Sharia law. Practicing other religions uh, outside of Islam uh, is a, a legal offense. Uh, women's rights are close to inexistent. Saudi Arabia, uh, as late uh, as 2005, it was only then that they gave uh, women electoral rights. Uh, women who are victims of uh, uh, a rape are thrown into jail. Uh, young uh, girls are treated as a currency uh, when a debt uh, needs to be repaid uh, and uh, girls and women can uh, be imprisoned in a, a so-called uh, woman's room for the rest of their lives uh, if they uh, dare to be uh, if they don't submit. So uh, the latest reforms are just uh, uh, a smoke and mirror show uh, we need to uh, demand protection of women's rights in Saudi Arabia because they are inexistent. Grazie, onorevole Otrevicius. Thank you, Mr. Otrevicius. One minute for Alde. The fact we are again gathered here in this house to discuss human rights situation in Saudi, Saudi Arabia is appalling. We see a well-funded media campaign aimed to demonstrate as if reforms in the country being implemented one after another. However, the reality is different. In fact, we see a crackdown on women's rights and human rights activists taking place. Since May 15 only, already 12 women's rights activists, including those promoting women's right to drive, have been arrested, defamed and labelled as traitors. The aim is to silence all of those who openly speak out. This cannot go on. To, here today, we call the Saudi authorities to put an end to the treatment of Saudi women as second-class citizens and immediately and unconditionally release all of them. I also call to immediately free Raif Badavi, Sakharov Prize laureate, who have been imprisoned for solely exercising his right to freedom and expression. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Etheridge. Two minutes for EFDD. Thank you. Wahhabi Saudi Arabia is undoubtedly a repressive regime. Their treatment of women and abuse of their rights is backward and uncivilized. What is worse is they seek to export their medieval values worldwide. I consider the best way to counter this is to export our values of freedom through trade. Free market capitalism has always been the gateway to free peoples, as we saw with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Any suggestion that the 6,000 UK firms exporting over £7 billion worth of goods to Saudi be stopped is folly. What we must do is increase our trade and expose the Saudi people to the values of freedom through free markets. Trade sanctions and embargoes, as with other parts of the world, is merely cutting our nose off to spite our face. Freedom is an unstoppable, uncontrollable ideal. No repressive state or religious superstition can ever defeat it in the long run. 
Its promotion is our greatest weapon against the forces of darkness and repression. Many of these forces, so well highlighted by their regime in Saudi and the ideals that they export through their funding of mosques in other parts of the world. It's crucial that we stay strong, free and open. We expose people to our values, to our trade, to the free market. Through that, civilization and free peoples will undoubtedly follow. Grazie, onorevole. Thank you, Mrs. Tosinski. One minute on behalf of ENF. President, votre proposition. Thank you, President. The draft resolution highlights the arbitrary um, detentions of a number of human rights activists. You have referred to a violence against religious minorities, and I would like here just to draw attention to the Christian minority who are subject to this violence so regularly. Uh, it, you refer to the fact that the um, patronage system has been abandoned, but it's Islamic law and Sharia, which is not just the law in um, Saudi Arabia, but it is starting to emerge in Europe and seriously threaten our citizens. You seem to be concerned about what's happening there, but you don't refer to um, the danger of Saudi's growing influence in Europe and in France particularly through Islamic uh, networks and uh, financing mosques or um, Salafist organizations. This uh, resolution is therefore insufficient, and um, Europe is merely a standing as a bystander against these executions and arbitrary detentions. Mr. Khan, one and a half minutes, please. <coughs> Mr. President, Commissioner, colleagues, if Prince Mohammed bin Salman is true to his promise of modernizing the country and advancing women's rights, then a major first step would be releasing all women's rights defenders and activists that have been arrested and imprisoned in the recent crackdown. Following my visit to the Kingdom last year, I praised the Saudis on the Project Vision 2030 and its efforts in reforming as well as taking positive steps with the lifting of the ban on women driving. I know the country is on a journey to modernization, but that journey will get more difficult if it takes regressive steps of arresting and imprisoning women while fighting discrimination. I am also aware that the male guardian system is currently being reviewed and will hopefully be reformed very soon, enabling women to act and participate independently in society. Women in Saudi Arabia need their basic human rights to be acknowledged, upheld and enhanced. I believe Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia as a country will be a stronger one through its inclusivity, empowerment and participation of women. The most successful nations in the world are the ones who are true pioneers of gender equality. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Thank you speakers, Mr. Picerno, for one minute. Thank you, President. Women in Saudi Arabia are being mistreated. They're being discriminated against. They're being diminished in every aspect of their life. It's been said that there's a segregation system which subjugates them entirely to male control, fathers, husbands or brothers. And therefore this party is duty bound to defend and promote self-determination for women in every area of the world. We cannot just condemn what is still going on in Saudi Arabia today. We cannot fail to call for the immediate release of activists fighting to defend these women and the immediate release of the Sakharov Prize winner Raif Badawi. And we cannot fail to ask for deeds finally to follow words and for a real sea change to happen to improve the situation of these women. Thank you. Now we move into the catch the eye procedure. Mr. Rio, follow by Mr. Nano. Thank you, President. Commissioner, those who thought that Prince uh, uh, Sam's decree that women, as an example, be able to drive showed there was a new progressive um, 
training in Saudi Arabia, have seen their illusions rapidly dispelled by this campaign of intimidation against distinguished uh, defenders of women's rights. Many have been threatened with illegal consequences, or, or legal, legal consequences, a number of cases have already been mentioned. Colleagues, it's important here to speak out unequivocally and say that, that dis despite the degree, the, the, the position of these rights defenders in Saudi Arabia are simply scandalous. They are still victims of a patriarchal system subject to guardianship, requiring a male member of the family to authorize them to study, travel, or carry out given professions. All, all this against um, a repressive background. These are women who have called for the emancipation of, of women. I would say that the real reforms in the country are, are these women, not um, the, the orthodox Saudi camp. Thank you. I'm going to be extremely stringent on speaking time from now on because we have the voting session starting at 12 noon and we have another item to debate. So please, may I urge you to respect your speaking time. Mr. Delano. President, the positive signs we've seen from the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia on the international scene when it comes to greater liberation for women, it seems are unfortunately contradicted by the behaviour of the state within the country. We know that more and more people are now connected to uh, social media and there's liberation when it comes to men and women, but having a uh, freedom of the press, having these general freedoms, that's still not the case. Rauf Badawi, who won the Sakharov Prize in 2015, uh, amongst others, is still imprisoned. The fight for the liberation of women in Saudi Arabia is only just beginning. The EU needs to support a positive evolution of this country which is still under an antiquated patriarchal system. There needs to be uh, freedom for men and women to decide their own lives in Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Thank you, President. The, the differences in time on the urgency this morning showed differences being dis distinguished between countries which regard as partners and those that are not. So the Rabia's embassy tells us that they have massive reform underwear. Well, they still have a way to go to get out to the Middle Ages, particularly for women who are still uh, subject to, to full guardianship by men. At last, women are going to be able to drive. Wow, what progress in 2018. Uh, a few days before that right enters into force, Women's rights defenders have been arrested. Uh, some of them had just uh, been accused of, of les majesté and, and being held in communicado. If the Crown Prince Salman really wants uh, re reform, then all these businesses, in, in, including Rife uh, Badawi, the Sakharov Prize winner, who uh, are working not for, for, for foreign interests, but for both, um, must be released. Thank you, Mr. Castaldo. One minute. Thank you, President. Colleagues, on the 15th of uh, May, a human rights offender, uh, defender and women's rights offender was uh, taken from home and imprisoned and completely isolated with no outside uh, contact with the world. He was accused of betrayal and conspiracy against the country, a very serious uh, offence which could entail a long prison sentence. And the only fault was to fight peacefully f to defend their rights. Uh, where are the promises of reform offered by the Saudi regime? They were applauded for those promises. But for as long as Raif Badawi is imprisoned, these uh, promises from the Saudi prince are just empty words, rhetoric which, frankly, we no longer accept. Mrs. Ward, followed by Mr. Polchak. Uh, 
UN human rights officials have warned this week that allegations against six women and three men known to have been taken into custody by the Saudi authorities appear to be very serious and could lead to draconian sentences. Indeed, they could face the death penalty. The detainees are being held by Saudi authorities at unknown locations, with one woman detained completely incommunicado. If, as it appears, their detention is related solely to their work as human rights defenders and activists on women's issues, they should be released immediately. These women have been subjected to a smear campaign in the Saudi media, being branded as traitors, which is a very worrying development for, women's, for women human rights defenders and activists. These arrests also come amid a PR push by the Saudi state, particularly targeting Western media, that attempts to sell de facto ruler Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman as a great reformer. In reality, the Saudi authorities have increased their, their repression of activists at home and are continuing their British and US-backed war on Yemen. Grazie. Honorevole. Thank you. Mr. Poltak, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Commissioner, we have been dealing many times with issues concerning human rights, trampling upon human rights in Saudi Arabia. Obviously, Mr. Badawi, the Sakharov Prize laureate, should be released immediately. On the other hand, the reforms uh, that have been implemented by the Prince uh, concerning the certain limitations on the men's guardianship or the lift of uh, the ban on driving that is positive. But, however, I really don't know if it bears real fruit, if the fruit of these reforms will be positive or not. And that is why we have to speak out. We have to clearly show that we are very closely watching the situation in Saudi Arabia and to ask the prince not to use only words, but also specific acts, releasing specific people, and also to improve fundamentally the situation of human rights in Saudi Arabia. Minuto. Thank you, Chair. I have also signed uh, today's uh, call on Saudi Arabia. Human rights are being violated daily. There is no freedom of expression, no freedom of the press. And mainly there is a systematic repression of women. Women who until recently couldn't even drive a car when alone. There is this so-called male guardian. So women, in order to travel, in order to be able to access health services, in order to choose a home, and even to uh, address themselves to the police, they have to have the permission of a male guardian, be it their father or brother. So it is obvious that this situation cannot go on. Women's rights are being systematically trampled. And, of course, we have these seven activists that have been unfairly detained. They should be released immediately. Deus, prego, un minuto. Deputy Deus, one minute. Commissioner, in uh, Saudi Arabia, People are uh, being uh, detained and uh, thrown into jail, people like uh, Raif Badawi. And we can see that uh, the rate of uh, these arrests is increasing. And, of course, we have the rights of women uh, that, as the colleagues have already mentioned, are being trampled upon, and they are an affront to our civilization and humanity. Of course, we hear that there are some reforms going on concerning the rights of women. However, on the other hand, with uh, certain legalistic trips, he's taking back with the one hand what he's giving away with the other. So the EU should do something. If we really want to condemn and change this uh, situation, we need to take some hard decisions. We need to impose tough diplomatic economic measures against Saudi Arabia and EU countries should not sell weapons to that country. Thank you. Lastly.
semnale foarte contradictorii vin din Arabia Saudită. Am salutat cu toții unele deschideri ale prințului. Uh, Prinț Mohammed bin Salman a anunțat că de pe 24 iunie, femeile vor fi allowed să drive. Now, this ban was something that campaigns had been uh, seeking to overturn, but they'd been coming in for a lot of opposition. Many of them, uh, such as women, had faced uh, problems and uh, imprisonment, and Parliament had sought the release of those uh, campaigners. And the right of uh, women has uh, not been uh, tolerated in Saudi Arabia. And uh, in terms of human rights, uh, we, the European Union, should ensure that it uses all economic and diplomatic channels to ensure that those rights are implemented. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now, Commissioner Stylianides, you have the floor. Thank you, President. We have started to follow immediately after the information was made public, the situation and the developments in the specific case of arrest of several human rights human rights defenders, including a group of prominent women activists in Saudi Arabia. The European Union is both surprised and disappointed by this development. This arrest takes place as Saudi Arabia has embarked on a program of socio-economic transform transformation and modernization and against the background of recent commitments by the Saudi leadership to women empowerment. These activists have been for many years promoting women's rights and women empowerment consistently with the Saudi leadership commitments under Vision 2030. Our delegation in Riyadh was in contact with some of them because, as usual, we support on the ground the cost and the effort of people who try to actively improve the human rights standards in our partner, partner countries. Hence, our surprise and disappointment as these arrests are in direct contradiction with the messages we have heard and welcome from the Saudi leadership in recent times. Moreover, the arrest happened one month before the end to the female driving ban expected to enter into effect on 24th June, a ban against which most of these women and men had campaigned. To, add, to our surprise was the severity of the accusation brought against these human rights, rights uh, defenders and the defamatory campaign conducted against them in the media before any legal action is started and therefore against the principle of presumption of innocence. The European Union has immediately sought clarification from the authorities on the circumstances around their arrest and notably on the specific accusation brought against them. We are waiting for a reply from the authorities and we will persist in our diplomatic engagement to say, shade some light on these arrests. The situation is fluid and information limited. We have noted with satisfaction the release of four of the women who had been arrested, including a 70-year-old lady, although we understand that new arrest of further human rights defenders after the first wave of arrest on um, 15 May has happened, giving very mixed messages on the overall situation. Recent reforms in Saudi Arabia have allowed women to attend sports events, apply for government jobs and enjoy the country's first public cinema screening in 35 years. We are encouraged by these reforms and hope they will indicate a new partner, partner in the Saudi commitments. The European Union wants to encourage the authorities to maintain that trajectory and to continue improving the Saudi social fabric. Setbacks as those just witnessed are therefore therefore deplorable. The European Union stands ready to support and accompany modernization efforts in Saudi Arabia, notably those that aim at strengthening human rights and fundamental freedoms. This is the message that High Representative passes relentlessly to the Saudi authorities in all her contacts. Thank you.
Grazie al commissario comuni. Thank you, Commissioner. I have received six motions to wind up the resolution. The debate is closed and the vote will be taken to later today. Next on our item, next on our agenda, we have the resolution on Sudan, in particular the situation of Noura Hussein Hamad. I really would ask you kindly to respect your speaking time because, as you know, at 12 noon,